Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be doing something in honor of it being uh, heading into our final four weekend in the uh, college basketball season. So uh, previously I did an old game called March Madness from Avalon Hill, which is kind of an abstracted uh, college basketball game, uh, relatively simple. Uh, so today I'm going to actually be doing something also coming out of the, uh, let's call it the Wayback Machine. This is uh, from Lance Hafner Games. And uh, you can see that the uh, first version of this game actually came out in 1984. I do remember it from my uh, my teenage years in the 80s, uh, the late 80s. And um, it's courtside college basketball. So Lance Hafner Games, if you're not familiar with this, um, they are pretty much defunct, I believe. But... They put out a whole bunch of different sports games covering all the major sports and some that are maybe a little bit less. I mean, there was tennis, there was track, there was, you know, wrestling and boxing. And um, they they partnered up with um, Thomas Mink to do a couple of racing games. They had uh, their boxing game was basically like title bout, the old the old board game from the uh, from the Trunzo brothers. So they had a lot of um, different games, and obviously the the more mainstream games like, or more mainstream sports rather, like baseball, basketball, football, hockey, etc. So this is the college basketball game. They had uh, college and pro basketball separated out. the uh, The football game, three and one football, actually had pro and college football. Um, my guess is they split the college and pro basketball largely because of the rules being um, significantly different between the two games, um, you know, the, the quarters versus halves and, and everything. And don't forget, this was back in the 80s, early 90s, when computing power was a lot less uh, powerful than it is these days. So anyway, what I was going to do is when I did my March Madness playthrough, I did the 1982 NCAA championship game between Georgetown and North Carolina. And I thought it might be interesting to do the same thing here as well. So I'm going to, this is a DOS based game. So obviously you have all kinds of things in here and I'm not really going to go through all the menu items and stuff in this, in this game. It's an old game. It's hard to find. Um, you can find it in some places, but I'm not sure I should be spreading that kind of information around, <laughs> um, you know, for copyright reasons. Um, but I, I do own most of the Hafner games. There may be one or two that I don't have. And I even have the floppy disks still, um, like literally old school um, floppy disks. So <laughs> um, not that I have any computer. There is no piece of hardware that I own currently that can uh, that can read or use a floppy disk of any kind so it's more like a nostalgia item at this point so anyway let's get let's get this going so we'll do computer versus computer um, i don't need to manage anything here visiting team so i have a whole bunch of different season season discs i'm gonna pick 82 i'm gonna go find my georgetown team which is down here whoops any change no so now you get the option to kind of um, disable players so that they're not available for the game. I don't know that that's really important for this. So I'm just going to select no. For our home team, we'll use the team that ended up winning the championship, which is North Carolina. And you can use page down and page up because there are obviously a lot of teams. And there is North Carolina right there. Uh, no, no change. We're not going to disable anybody. Three-point shot, no. 35 second shot clock. No, there was no shot clock back then. Location, we'll do neutral site. Uh, display pause in seconds, 0.5 is fine. Um, fouls to disqualify five. Uh, free throws on the 10th shot, shoot one and one. There was no double bonus back then. I mean, if you look down here, it kind of goes through some of the rules. It tells you the first shot clock was adopted in 84, 85, but wasn't used in the postseason tourneys. The three-point shot came in in 86, 87. Two free throws instead of one and one after the 10th foul didn't come in until 90, 91. So we're in 82. I want to play it as rel relatively close to, you know, reality as possible. So no free, no three-pointers, no uh, three-point free throws, obviously. Uh, 
No one free throw for the first six floor fouls. So they literally shot one free throw, but that went out the window in 72-73. So we're just going to get underway here. I'm going to hit number eight to start the game. Now, um, you can actually do season replays and everything. This is for considering the time that this was done. And the, the programmer's name is Shannon Lynn. They, uh, he did a tremendous job with the, with all of these games. Just, you know, fitting this into the constraints that were in place programming wise back in the 80s. This, these games were tremendous. So you can actually have a 10 minute ticker where it'll show you um, scores from, you know, out of market games, so to speak. Um, and you could do a season replay. And if you bought the 82 season disc, as you saw, you got all of the college, all of the division one college basketball teams. So you could play, you know, you could play the whole season if you wanted to. Um, same thing with football. I mean, there, there were season discs for, for entire NCAA football seasons, which are hard to find even today. Um, action PC football, for example, and I don't want to digress too much, but I just want to mention this. There are homebrew seasons for many of the old college football seasons um, for that game because the community built it. I mean, um, Dave Cock, Dave Cook Sports, he kind of, you know, he has a few seasons most and has obviously more recent seasons because now with all the statistics that are available, it's pretty easy to spin these up. Um, as you go further back in time, obviously things are less well documented and you would need to like reach out to you know, the sports information department at various schools to kind of get, you know, their home home uh, statistics uh, for their team and, and everything. And you can piece it together that way. But when you're talking 100 plus football teams, that's a lot of work. So anyway, end of digression. Let's move on. Okay, so you can edit their contribution percentages. So if you wanted to say that, you know, oh, I want Michael Jordan to be the key focus or whatever, it um, will consist of the, as it says here, cons contribution rating consists of the player's frequency to shoot, rebound, and commit fouls. So it's almost like a usage kind of thing, almost like a really you know bare bones usage kind of thing. So we're just going to proceed to the game. Okay, now it's going to play the game out. This will take probably, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes maybe. So... Uh, lucky you, you can turn the sound off or you can listen to me ch <laughs> chatter for a while. But, um, you know, you have basically your your familiar lineups, right? Jimmy Black, Matt Darty, Michael Jordan, James Worthy, Sam Perkins, right? That 82 Carolina team with, you know, three really good uh, NBA players, obviously some Hall of Fame players, um, one of which, of course, is Michael Jordan, who arguably... You know, one of the two, at least two or three best and best basketball players ever. Some will say the best. Some will say, you know, maybe it's LeBron or Wilt or whatever. You, there's all kinds of arguments, magic. There's there's no end to the potential uh, argument points on who the greatest basketball player of all time is. But Michael Jordan is certainly in that discussion. So here we have Georgetown looking like they're out to a good start. Um, they obviously have uh, Patrick Ewing. And they also have, uh, he's not in the game currently, but they have Sleepy Floyd. And uh, those were the two, well, Ewing's now out of the game as well, but those were the two main guys on that team. And this was a Georgetown team that was consistently excellent from, uh, you know, Ewing was a, was a freshman. I almost said rookie. He was a freshman in 81, 82, um, just as Jordan was. But... He played all four years at Georgetown, and all four years they went really, really deep into the tournament. Um, and I believe they lost in uh, in the final in 82 and in 85. And I'm trying to remember the 84 final. They may have lost in the 84 final as well. Um, but I know they lost to Villanova in an upset in 85. They lost to North Carolina in 82, which was probably less of an upset. Uh, 83 was the NC State, uh, Jim Valvano running around the court like a madman looking for somebody to hug game after they knocked off uh, Clyde Drexler's uh, Houston Cougars. And I'm drawing a blank on who won in 84 right now, which is a little bit embarrassing for me. Um, but you know what? I can look that up and I'm going to do that off screen here. 
uh, 84. So, oh, Georgetown won in 84. See, there you go. Total brain fart on my part. Totally forgetting that Ewing did win one in 84. So he played in uh, in three finals in his four years of college basketball, which is really impressive. Obviously, Patrick Ewing's a Hall of Famer, great player, had a you know a really strong NBA career as well. But um, yeah, he and Jordan were both freshmen here. Um, Worthy and Perkins, obviously extremely good players, and Sleepy Floyd as well had a good NBA career and was a really really strong college player. Um. And they beat uh, Georgetown in 84, beat Houston. So Houston went to the finals, and maybe that's why I thought of this. They they went to the finals in 83 and 84 and lost both times. And maybe I had uh, them confused with the, uh, with, the, with the Hoyas. But this was the John Thompson Hoyas. You know, this was kind of their... Um, I mean, obviously, following this, they, they ended up having Alonzo Mourning, et cetera, et cetera. In later years and some other uh, Dikembe Mutombo, you know, John Thompson was good at churning out the really high quality Hall of Fame quality big men. Uh, so Georgetown, you know, this was kind of their their days of wines, wine and roses, I guess. But uh, they definitely that program was definitely top notch for a long time. Um, North Carolina, obviously one of the true blue bloods of college basketball. Dean Smith was the coach, of course, you know, one of the all time greatest coaches in college basketball history. There have been countless NBA players that came from this program. Um, you know, the three here, Jordan, Worthy, and Perkins being, you know, among the among the best of those guys. Not that um, you know, you can't look you can look back, you could go back in time and and after this, and you're gonna find plenty of NBA players that came out of the Tar Heel program. So here we are winding down the end of the first half. We got three minutes left. Georgetown's up by three, 29-26. Um, Ewing only has five points currently. Um, and you'll see when we get to halftime, we'll get a box score. And the game does a really good job of tracking statistics. I mean, that's fairly, as a programmer, I can tell you that's fairly, no, I don't want, fairly easy to do. But again, um, for the time, and you know this is this is bare bones, right? This is nothing fancy. This is text. I'm using a um, a program, a, a DOS emulator called VDOS, because this was obviously an MS DOS game coming out as it did in the 1980s. You know, the very early days of uh, you know the Microsoft operating system, pretty much. And so you need a you need a DOS emulator to run this game and any of the other Hafner games. These are not Windows games. These are DOS games. So you do need to have that, and we just hit the we just hit the half. It is thirty four to thirty Georgetown. So let's look at our let's look at our box score here. So here's Georgetown. So Ewing played fifteen and a half minutes. He was two for five from the field, one of one from the stripe, three rebounds, all defensive. He's got five points, one foul, one assist, one block. Um, the leading scorer is uh, Sleepy Floyd, it looks like. He's three of eight from the field, but he only played six and a half minutes because, well, the, that's a good question. Why did he only play uh, six and a half minutes? He did pick up a foul, but that's just one foul. So he's three of eight from the field, two for two from the free throw line, eight points, one foul, one assist, one steal, no turnovers. So they are shooting 48% from the field and 55% from the stripe, which is not great, but this is college basketball, and you get some really ugly free throw percentages even back then. Uh, five total turnovers, 18 total rebounds. Let's take a look at North Carolina. You have your big three right at the top, Jordan Perkins Worthy. Jordan, two for nine, not a good shooting game. He's got one rebound, four points. He's had two fouls, one assist, two turnovers. So pretty shaky half for the Michael Jordan. Sam Perkins, 16, just over 16 minutes, four of seven from the field. He's got an offensive rebound, three total rebounds, eight points, two fouls, uh, one steal, no turnovers. James Worthy played the whole half, seven of nine. He's the uh, he's their leading scorer. No, he did not get to the stripe, and in fact, they only shot one free throw, um, which is weird because it doesn't show it in the box score. Um but Worthy had three rebounds, one of which was offensive, 14 points, one foul, one assist, two steals, and a turnover. 
uh, Jimmy Black, you know, basically sco- uh, scoreless. He uh, he missed all three of his shots. Darty, Matt Darty, who became a coach at North Carolina later on, one for four from the field. Also had three rebounds. Also picked up two fouls. So foul trouble was certainly uh, an issue for the Tar Heels. They committed 13 fouls in the first half, which is a decent amount. And they had ended up with seven assists, and but they did have three steals. Only committed three, three turnovers, although it says five there at the bottom. They do have 18 rebounds. So let's get back to the action and play the second half. You get your scoreboard, which is completely empty <laughs> um, of scores. You have matchups, but there's nothing in there. So those were all ACC scores, it looked like to me, as I kind of quickly glanced at it before I hit the uh, the key to move us forward here. So you can read the uh, the play-by-play there, hopefully. It should be fairly large on the screen. Um, the nice thing about VDOS is it gives you kind of a bigger window uh, out of the box without messing with settings, um, as opposed to, say, DOSBox, which is another emu- emulator and is a very good emulator. The reason I like this one is you can easily copy text out of this and paste it into things. And so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take the box score from this game and paste it into chat GPT and have it write us up a recap and just see what that looks like. Um, Kind of a little bonus at the end of the game here. Uh, So as you can see, we have, uh, you know, no Ewing again on the floor right now. No Sleepy Floyd. So you would think this would be a time where North Carolina might be able to make some hay. Um, they are they are down by four, and they just committed another foul. This was on Hancock, and he's out now. So, um, oh, Perkins with the block, Jordan with the rebound, backhand pass to Black. He's open, misses. Spriggs has the rebound, another steal for Black. For Black, now we get a free throw. One for two and then a miss. All right, we have a timeout and we go back to Georgetown. Still no Ewing on the floor. And it's 42-37, pass to Black. He takes a, another shot and cans it, 42-39, Worthy. Worthy hits a jumper, 42-41, 44-41, Georgetown. Worthy, and they call timeout. Now, there is no shot clock, so in some of these, you'll see a whole lot of play-by-play going on like this. Like, darty has got the ball, and he's doing a whole lot of stuff here, and he's not, you know, he, he did eventually kick it to Jordan, who hit the who hit a jumper. It is 44-43. We're still, now they're working it again. Um, relatively low scoring, I would, I would say. We're halfway through the second half, and it's 44-43. It's it's hard. It's looking like it's going to be difficult for, I mean, Carolina gets close and they can't quite climb that mountain and get ahead of the Hoyas here. They're now down by five again. And Sleepy Floyd. Uh, yep. Well, we got a steal. So it was a lot, plenty of turnovers. Another foul on Jordan. He's got three. Not a shooting foul. They they score again. So things are not going well for the um, for the uh, Tar Heels here. Sorry. So let's see. We have who's on the floor here? Uh, Cole, Sleepy Floyd, Fred Brown. Uh, Ed Spriggs and Patrick Ewing. Then we have Michael Jordan, James Worthy, uh, Robinson. I'm not sure his first name. Barlow and Perkins, Sam Perkins. And it's 52-46, five minutes to go. 52-48, can they make a stop here? They force a timeout. Ewing shoots the J, misses. Ooh. Perkins missed a shot that had a 67% chance of going in. And they miss another shot with a 67% chance chance of going in. And they end up giving up a bucket on the other end. Worthy scores again. He's got 18. Which I think leads, at least, it at least leads North Carolina. 
And I believe Floyd is the leading scorer for Georgetown, and he has 12. So that's probably leading all scorers. Uh, Jordan on the bench here with just two and a half minutes left to go. They're down by six. They get a foul. Foul on Blaylock. Pass to Black. Oof. Okay. It's looking like Georgetown is going to... Uh, Get the revenge here in a pretty low-scoring game. And they're in the bonus now. They're shooting. So Black just fouled out. Or somebody fouled out. And, yeah, it's it's over now. They're down by 10. The game is going to about to be over. I don't know why they're fouling here. Down by 10 with one second left. Um, and that's it. Game over. So the game is over. We have a 60 to 50 win by Georgetown. Let's take a look at the box score. So we're going to do stats to screen. So there's the line score, uh, Georgetown. Let me open up my notepad here because I'm going to copy all this out. So let me pull this over here to my other screen. So you just highlight it here and it automatically copies it. You don't even have to hit control C or anything. Come back. Okay, here's our Georgetown box score. I'm going to copy it and paste it. And then I'm going to go to, well, let's just talk about it real quick. So Floyd, Sleepy Floyd with 12 points on 5 of 13 shooting, 2 of 2 from the line. He had a couple steals, 2,000 and assist, 12 points to lead Georgetown. Ewing, 28, almost 29 minutes, 3 for 8 from the field, 5 for 7 from the line, 3 offensive rebounds, 8 total rebounds, 11 points, 1 foul, 1 assist, 2 blocks, and a steal, a couple turnovers as well. Those were your two main scorers. Jones and Hancock each pitched in 8. Um, Eric Smith with 7. They shot 46% for the uh, from the field and 59% from the line. Let's go to the... Let's go to the Hoy, uh, the Tar Heels rather. So let me copy this out real quick. Whoops, that's not what I want. I want to do it this way. Well, come on now. There we go. Okay. So now I can do my uh, chat B GPT thing and see if this works. So Jordan just three for 11 in 33 minutes. That's bad shooting. He had three rebounds. Six points, three fouls, two assists, a steal, and four turnovers. Not a good game for Michael Jordan. Sam Perkins, decent game. 33 minutes, 7 of 12 from the field, 1 for 2 from the free throw stripe. One offensive board, four total boards, 15 points, four fouls, one block, one steal, two turnovers. Worthy played the whole game. Shot 9 for 11, didn't get to the line. One offensive rebound, four total rebounds, 18 points, two fouls, one assist, three steals, and two turnovers. Looking at the rebounding numbers, they have 25. They got out-rebounded uh, pretty handily. Well, I guess not so much. Uh, turnovers were 14 for the for the Tar Heels and 12 for Georgetown. Georgetown out-rebounded them 35-29. So let's move over to... So we're done. That's the final scoreboard. You can, re, you can display them again. You can save them. You can play another game, etc. I'm just going to go back here. So now what I'm going to do is, here's my notepad that's got all my, it's got my box score in it. So I'm going to just copy this. And I'm going to go into my chat GPT, which is on my other screen here. And I'm going to paste this in and I'm going to say, create a box score, a, a recap rather. Create a game recap for this box score. Sorry about the ringing phone in the background. All right, it's writing it up. I'll read it here rather than showing it to you so you don't have to read. Georgetown secured an impressive 82 to 60, 82 to 60, well, that's wrong. Um, yeah, it, it probably saw the 82s at the, uh, at the top and it doesn't understand um maybe let me let me edit this let's do this and type north carolina let's make it a little easier on this thing here 
it is just an AI after all. All right, we'll try this again. Okay, generate a recap of the of uh, from this box score. Here we go. All right, Georgetown defeated North Carolina 60 to 50 in a basketball game. Georgetown's top performers were Ewing, 11 points, 8 rebounds, Floyd, 12 points, and Hancock, 8 points, 4 rebounds. North Carolina's top performers were Worthy, 18 points, 4 rebounds, and Perkins, 15 points, 4 rebounds. Georgetown had a field goal percentage of 46% and a free throw percentage of 59%. They had 12 turnovers and 35 rebounds. North Carolina had a field goal percentage of 43% and a free throw percentage of 33%. They had 13 turnovers and 19 rebounds. So there you have it. Uh, that is kind of strange that it counted it up that way, but... Um, there's probably some team rebounds and things. I didn't actually add all this up to see if it added up to this number. Um, so it's a little bit imperfect, I think. But it did give me a reasonable like recap in terms of what happened. Um, and if you gave it context and you said, you know, this was the 1982 NCAA championship game. I believe this game was played in New Orleans. Um, at the Superdome, is that where this was played? Uh, it just says New Orleans, Louisiana. So yeah, it was played in New Orleans. I did remember that. And I believe it was in the Superdome. Um, so yeah, that's going to actually, I'm actually going to wrap it up here. I did just want to kind of do this as a look back at a game that I played a lot of as a younger guy. Um, all these Lance Hafner games, uh, and you know, if you guys want to see some of the other ones, like I said, they're a little hard to find. Um, if you poke around enough on the internet, you probably will be able to find them and, uh, download them and you would need a DOS emulator to actually play them, but they give you nice, pretty realistic, uh, results. The interface obviously is clunky because we are talking a DOS program. So it's all keyboard driven. Um, you can use your mouse with the emulator to do things like I did, such as copying out text and so on and so forth for your box scores. But, um, but yeah, that is going to do it. Um, this has been kind of a, you know, throwback look at a classic sports game. And, you know, as I said, feel free to comment and say, Hey, show us three and one football or show us the hockey game or whatever. Um, I can't find my baseball uh, I think I have the discs, but again, as I mentioned, it's hard for me to actually um, figure out how to get them off those discs because I don't have a computer that has a floppy drive in it anymore. Uh, like I'm sure most people do not. We're talking dinosaur machines now, right? Um, the, yeah, this is the uh, that's the Jurassic age for computing. Uh, so, you know, we don't have anything like that around here anymore. Anyway, that's going to do it. As always, thank you for watching. Please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. I greatly appreciate your support. I definitely appreciate you guys taking your time to watch my videos. I know everybody's got a busy schedule, and there are literally millions and millions of possible things you can watch on streaming platforms, television, whatever. So uh, until next time, I'm Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered Sports Edition. And... Happy gaming.